I love the variety of ideas and approaches we've heard tonight. And I am sorry to say we've come to our last speaker. He's not just any last speaker. Mauro Rosatelli and his associate have traveled from Italy just to address you tonight. He's not here, I don't think, to attend IVEX. He just wants to be part of Pecha Kucha. <laughs> Mauro. Thank you so much for that. I think we can go. Good evening. In this presentation, I will describe the design spiral path of a 43-foot aluminum sailing boat with the following characteristics. Light displacement hull, ocean cruiser stability in A class, six accommodating bears, and good sailing performances. In tackling these goals, I started with the preliminary research in the following different fields, a market research, a stylistic study, and a statistical analysis. What follows is the synthesis of the process. I started by creating a database of 100 existing sailing boats. Then I studied the lines and shapes of many different designs, spanning from aircraft to car and boat designs, in an attempt to find these spiny elements to be used to model the boat. Style is very important because not only gives us a pleasant shape, but also the real essence and personality of the product. It's like saying that, first of all, we eat or buy with our eyes. Focus on this blue power boat. I designed this here. It doesn't change. I don't, oh, yes. I designed this here. Its name is Shark 28, and I hope I don't need to explain why. All the elements collected during this research were used in an iterative trial and an error spiral process. I don't know which command is, you or me? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is it good? Um, yes, these are the general plans and views with the main dimensions of the boat. As you can see, I also took care of the ergonomic problems, and every single element of the accommodation layout was developed in order to comply with these standards. I considered all the elements that on board that had impact on the weight distribution and I managed to limit the range of movement of the center of gravity in order to achieve good performances in balance in every loading condition. The final result is a clean deck plan. Once completed this process, I studied the sail plan and the appendages in order to estimate the total resistance of the hull and to choose the engine to install on board. Then I determined the fuel tank's capacity in order to grant a fuel autonomy of 315 nautical miles. The sail plan has a fractional rig of about 100 square meters and a mass of about 20 meters from top of floors. Of course, it is intimately related to the appendages in order to get the proper lead and the, to grant a small amount of weather air with a, with a good balance in different sailing conditions. I chose a four digit profile. I don't know for the rudder and a five digit for the keel. These data offer a good compromise in terms of optimization of the opposing design parameters, in this specific case, lift versus drag. Furthermore, the five digit profile of the keel provided enough volume for the ballast. Of course, I had also to provide adequate resistance to the hull beam system, defining scantlings for all the plates, stringers, and transversal frames. The entire hull structure is made of aluminum per aluminum, while the key structure is made of aluminum anticorrodal. This, of course, is an interesting surprise, I think, and probably the real essence of my presentation. I chose this challenging task to maintain the full load weight within the limits of the fiberglass boat. This makes the Endeavour, with a full load of a little less than 11 tons, really competitive for the market especially because of its safer hull 
and durability. Following, you can see the engine system and its position on the floors. I prefer to realize a built-in system of floors in order to have a much more robust frame and a better protection against vibrations. This, of course, is safer and beneficial for water tightness too. But I studied the capacity plant too, and in this case, for fuel and fresh water, I chose the twin tank solution in order to reduce the free surface areas and having the possibility to switch between one another in case of necessity. I took care of many other details, never neglecting the safety standards. This is also the case of the steering system, which is one of the most important on board. As for water tightness, I chose to locate the rudder stock behind the aft bulkhead. And this is the entire hull structure exploded in a 3D view. You can see the stringers which I took care to develop on a plan in order to simplify the welder's job. You can also see the cutoffs on the frames to be realized during the laser cutting phase. This, as you can imagine, is a great economic advantage in terms of time and labor. Both frames and stringers have 10 mm thickness, while the plates you see here have 4 mm thickness for the deck and side and 5 mm for the bottom. In spite of the different colors, the curvature differences of the plates are so small that the entire hull can easily be rolled without any problem. The ventilation system can work all day long without consuming energy on board. These photovoltaic impellers can grant a change of air per hour equal to almost five times the internal net volume of the boat. This solution prevents the possibility of developing moisture inside the hull, even if the boat is moored for a long time without crew on board. And following is a comparison, should be a comparison, uh, between the old-fashioned way to build a boat, which usually started from the molding loft, and the new leading edge technology based on laser cutting and TIG welding. Now we, we have only one simple passage from cut to cam that is extremely precise and time gaining. Just try to consider the difficulties related to transferring cut drawings to the cam system which is not an easy task to achieve. This is why probably we would need a, a, another specific presentation for this. The kit system, as I told, is, uh, is uh, studied uh, for uh, aluminum anticorodal. It, it is based on a structure that is studied specifically for this boat and that can be developed for special purposes on demand. It allowed to, to obtain a good compromise between stability and hydrodynamic performances. Here you can see a comparison between the Endeavour in red dots and the statistical database. The ratios on the right hand side give you the good characteristics of this boat. And in conclusion, I would like to thank Carl Kramer and the professional boat builder staff for inviting me here, as well as all the people who supported me during the design process. A special thank you goes to my dear friend and colleague, the naval architect, Davide Leone, who is here with me this evening. We are always open to challenging tasks, even on wood or fiberglass field, so don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. <laughs>